Hi everyone! Welcome to today's episode of Takeover Tuesday. How are we feeling everyone? How is it going everybody on Tuesday morning? I saw some familiar faces yesterday on So Steady Monday so thanks for coming back. I'm so excited for you guys to be here. I've got another little guest. Kyle, come on in. <laughs> Where's the hat? Where's the hat? <laughs> Say hi Kyle. Oh he's back. I know. He's coming. Now is your chance to go buy some SMP merch. <laughs> Welcome in. Oh, we're kind of matching if today. Carol Lombardi's on the show. Carol, where Thank are you at? You for the Costco gift card. We're having Thank a pizza you. party tomorrow. We're getting Thank pizza. You, Carol. Thank you, Carol. If you didn't know, Carol Thank won you. our Dream Studio giveaway, mm -hmm. and she was nice enough to send us a little treat to get some Costco pizza. So we're doing that tomorrow. So thank you, Carol. <laughs> Anyways, today we have two, not one, but two very exciting guests today for Takeover Tuesday. They are National Baby Lock Educators. We've got Melinda Stevenson and Karen Parker today. I'm so excited to have them on. They are awesome, and they are so filled with knowledge. I'm so excited for you guys to meet them and hang out with them for the next hour. Um, just real quick, we've got some fun and exciting things going on the rest of this week. Make sure you guys tune into SMP Live. We have a really exciting show, something new going on. We've got Jiffy Steamers coming on. So that's really exciting to learn some more about handheld steamers, you know, some new things, some new gadgets. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> then we've got 
um, SMP Nation tomorrow, and we're going to have our own sewing guru, Deb, on showing you that Rico printer. So that's really exciting. Um, let me do some shout outs real quick. I'm seeing Debbie Shaw, Eileen Costello, Renee Bolton. I love seeing all you guys. I, you guys are just some familiar faces. I love seeing you guys back on here. Let's see. We've got Joe Allen. They're all saying hi, Roger. <laughs> Oh, Oops, let me move over here. Hi, There's everyone. Roger. <laughs> Say hi, everyone. <laughs> Star Raymond. Um, we've got all the all of SMP Nation here today. So I'm super excited that you guys are here and back. But let me just quit rambling and let me bring our guests on today. So Melinda and Karen. Hello. How are you? Hey, y'all. Thank you, you so much for right having now. <laughs> How are you Thanks. guys today? Good. 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 Thank you. Awesome. Yes, of course. I'm so excited to have you guys on. Just real quick before I hop off here and let you guys go, where can we find you after today's show? So do you guys have Facebook, Instagram, anything like that? Go ahead, Melinda. <laughs> so Karen and I have um, Technique Tuesdays with Karen and Melinda on Facebook. So we would love for you to join our group. Um, again, that's Technique Tuesdays with Karen and Melinda um, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And um, Karen... And I have a Facebook, um, uh, uh, Melinda Sows, um, and, a, and then melindastevenson.com. I have a web um, Perfect. Yeah, a website. So Karen, Karen's got some really active um, web presences. Ooh, perfect. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, and the one thing, um, you know, I'm doing the video, showing a video today. And one of the things I want to do is I'll post that video on the our Facebook page on the Technique Tuesdays with Karen and Melinda. I'll put that on there. So that if someone wants to go back and watch it again, okay? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it works so for us. Melinda, so you guys heard it. Take good Technique to Tuesday, right? Technique, Technique Tuesday, Tuesday on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook. Technique Perfect. Tuesday you guys know. Karen and Melinda. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. All righty. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. Have fun. I'll see you guys in a bit. If you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comments and I'll be sure to let them know and they can answer them for you and stay tuned for some giveaways. We've got some exciting things in store for you guys. So Melinda and Karen, go ahead and take it away. Okay. Thank you so much. Of we appreciate course. it. Thank you. Um, yes, and we do. Karen, thank you. Karen is on first today. Um, she has some pretty cool stuff to show you. And then um, I'll come out after Karen finishes. Mm -hmm. So go mm -hmm. ahead, Karen. Okay, what I'm going to do today is talk about covering cording. I think cording is such a great little detail. It seems so small, but boy, it can really jazz up something really, really nicely. Um, and I'm going to show lots of different ways that I have found that work for me using several different feet that may surprise you, um, not just cording feet. Um, but anyway, so what I'm going to do is share my video. And let's see, let's get, get going here. I think it pops in pretty quickly. So everybody hold on to your seats. Hi there, this is Karen Parker, Baby Lock Educator. Today we'll talk about covering cording with confidence, beginning with cording types and sizes, presser feet used for cording, matching the cording size to the foot, needle position or a left right shift. And guess what? We will not use a zipper foot. There are 30 wonderful sewing accessories and feet in the Solaris Foot Kit. Let's take a look at six different feet from this kit. The Baby Lock website is a wonderful resource. Now, if you have a different machine than what I'm using today, I'll be using the Solaris, um, and you're not sure if any of these feet will, can actually be used on your machine, check out the Baby Lock website. Go to our products and navigate until you get to the feet and attachments, or you could just use the search function. After you find the desired foot, scroll down to see the list of machines that can use that foot. The first foot we'll take a look at is the double cording foot. It uses a cord size of seven to eight millimeters. Not although the title tells you that it's a double cording foot, we're going to make single cording with it today. The second foot in our lineup will be another double cording foot. This one uses a cord of four to six millimeters. Notice how these two feet look like identical twins from the top side. When you turn them over, you'll see that they look a little bit different on the bottom side. 
the 46 millimeter model has a wide outer edge, a little bit wider as compared to the seven to eight millimeter, which has a little bit more narrow outer edge. This Vinny piping foot is perfect for small areas and tight corners. Clear view allows you to see exactly where you're stitching for perfect placement. It uses a, about a two millimeter cord. Another small clear foot is a pearl and piping foot. This one can accommodate a cord up to one quarter inch in diameter. The third clear foot we'll examine is the piping foot left. Two millimeter cording fits neatly into a tiny groove on the underside of the foot and will sit to the left of the needle. Last but not least, and maybe even a little bit surprising, is a three groove pin tuck foot. Let's take a look at a few types of cording available for covering. First, we have a three ply cotton jute. This one did not have a size label. Here is a soft, unspun and net covered one. This one is a four ply, very soft cotton. And this is a very teeny tiny, I'm not even sure if it's quite two millimeters. Another cord you could use for covering is macrame cord. Now the label on it says it's three millimeters, but always measure. I'll show you my favorite method for easy, simple, accurate measurings for the fabric strips to cover the cording. This method begins with a basic post-it note or at least a portion of one, as I'm using here. I'm calculating the width of fabric I'll need to cover the three millimeter macrame cord and have a one half inch seam allowance. Snugly wrap the post-it note around the cord and crease the paper. Place the ruler firmly against the cord and mark one half inch from the cord. Remove the cord and measure this mark. This one is three quarters of an inch, but, but remember to double that amount. In this example, the fabric strip needs to be one and a half inches. The next consideration is how to choose the best foot for the job at hand. Let's start with the larger capacity double cording foot and the four ply soft cotton cord. Test the fit of the cord in the groove of the foot. Because this cord is soft and a little bit squishy, a technical term there, it will run smoothly under the foot. Also test the ease of movement by placing the foot down and pulling the cording through it. I'll also test the four to six millimeter double cording foot to make sure it will accommodate the macrame cord. Now let's cover some cording.
I'm going to stop right here to clarify the needle positions of the three lines of stitching. The far left image is the covered cord strip. The center image is the covered cord basted to one layer of fabric. The right hand image shows the cording between two fabrics and the two fabrics are right sides together. And what's really important here is that final stitch line. Here it's shown in red and it is the one closest to the cording. Now let's move on to the purl and piping foot.
So I, I uh, saw a few of the questions um, and someone asked a question about the Presto. I believe that the, any of these feet would work on the Presto. Um, and the cool thing, I, you know, talking about not using a, a zipper foot back in the day, that's all I had. And I, what I really disliked about um, working with the zipper foot, it was so hard to get those raw edges even so that it was easier to apply into my project. So I guess you could see how nice, it, how much easier with the control of the foot that whichever foot it was that I was using um, gave me the control to get those edges together. Um, thank you. Someone complimented my quilt. Thank you. Um, uh, someone also mentioned um, that you would could not not necessarily use your straight stitch machine for this project. True that. Um, this uh, all the feet that I use were part of the Solaris foot kit, but I'm sure that they all come. Well, we know where to get them. We we know where to get them. Um, someone also said that it was looked very easy. It is easy and it doesn't take an awful lot of practice. Of course, practice always helps. Um, let's see, and piping and cording, those two terms I use interchangeably. Um, I guess if I were going to make a, a very specific difference, it would be that cording would be the naked part and the piping would be the, it covered uh, and not naked. Um, let's see. And about larger cords, um, you would probably have to go to a more traditional way, maybe with the, the narrow zipper foot to do a very large cord. Um, you just have to test. And part of the reason I wanted to share uh, my use of these sometimes unusual uh, choices of feet for cording or covering cords um, was so that you could have choices. Um, you could see some things that, it, that maybe you didn't really necessarily think about um, when you go, especially if you have that Solaris foot kit. Oh, good gracious. If, if um, you haven't seen that, it, it's absolutely wonderful. It's, uh, it's like a little treasure box. It's, it's nicer than my jewelry box. So um, is Melinda coming on? Hey, okay, all right, hey. where are you? <laughs> all I don't right. want to take up any more time. I know okay. you've got some fun things to do with the serger. I am always amazed at all the cool things that you do with feet, Karen. Okay, it's just so much fun. You always like stretch the boundaries of creativity and it's wonderful. So today I'm going to show you guys um, how to make a ruffled skirt on the serger, all done on the serger. And you can do this on any baby lock serger. I'm going to show you how to use the ruffling foot. Um, so let me, I'm going to share some slides with you. So let me share these slides so that you can see what we're doing. Okay. So we're, this is the ruffled skirt that we're making. Um, and the cutting instructions are super simple, regardless of what kind of skirt you're making. So I'm showing you the cutting instructions for a 4T skirt. But what you do is you're just going to measure how long you want the skirt and then you're going to basically divide that by three and then you'll have three tiers okay and the other thing that you the other um sort of cutting that you want to know is that each of your ruffled layers is going to be twice this the length of the ruffle of the layer above it okay so this layer right here is 27 inches and then this layer is 54 inches and then this layer is 108 inches, okay? And that's for um, that 4T skirt. Now, you're going to have a little left over, but I would rather have some left over than not enough as I'm stitching, okay? So what we're going to do then is we're going to go straight to the serger. And I just want you to see this setup, and then I'll show it to you on the serger that I'm getting ready to sew on. Um, so you're setting it up for a four thread overlock, but you're going to do a couple of things different. Um, now, of course, with a four thread overlock on all the baby lock sergers, you're going to use the stitch selector at A, but your differential feed is going to be all the way up at two. And you can see there's a cool little sign there that lets us know that if you have it all the way up at two, then you're going to do some ruffling. You're going to have your, um, uh, I'm sorry, differential feed at two, and then you're going to have your stitch length at four. 
and then you're going to have your um, stitch width at six. So in other words, you've got your stitch length as long as it could possibly go, okay? All right, so let's go to the serger. I'm going to stop sharing. So there's the ruffling foot. If, you, if you're not sure what it looks like, that's what the ruffling foot looks like. So let me um, stop this share and um, let's go right here. Okay, oops. There we go. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, change my camera so that you can um, see um, the serger up close, okay? And I'm also going to show you a, um, a book that has the ruffling foot so that you can see, um, you know, what, what we're looking at for the ruffling foot. If you need that number, it's B-L-E-R-F, okay? And that's the ruffling foot that actually fits on the Acclaim, the Victory, and the Celebrate. I'm actually surging today on the Acclaim, okay? Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind whenever you, if you've never used your ruffling foot, one of the things that you want to do right when you get it out of the package is you want to give this section a little tug, okay? You want to pull it all the way out because sometimes it gets squished flat and then your ruffling foot doesn't work all that well, okay? All right, so you're just going to slide it on onto your machine, okay? And then you're going to start with your two layers, all right? So I'm actually showing you on a, on a miniature version. So this is actually the layer that's going to have my elastic. So this is my top layer, all right? So my top layer, I'm going to slide in the top of my ruffling foot, okay? And I'm going to slide it all the way back to my needles. And then I'm going to, let me get this camera a little bit higher so that you can actually see that. Sure, that's clear. Yeah. So I'm going to go with all of that to my needles, and then I'm going to lower my needles into my fabric, okay? And what that's going to do is that's going to keep my fabric from coming out. Now, I'm going to put the actual ruffle, okay? So this is the long section that I'm ruffling, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it face up, so I've got right sides together, and that's going to go right underneath my, my um, ruffle foot. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I like to raise my needle so that my knife comes up because I want to slide this bottom layer right up, right, but it right up to that knife, okay? And it takes a little finagling to get that done. So I'm going to use my tweezers to kind of pull that forward. It's the starting that is the most difficult part of the journey, probably, okay, the beginning. All right, so now that that's up there, I'm going to lower my presser foot. And then as I start it, I'm just going to make sure that my differential feed, that my, um, that my uh, feet, my feed dogs actually catch that. And then I'm going to start searching. Okay, so here we go. Let me just see if we're going to catch that. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, now, now that we're all caught in there, the one thing that I want to make sure that I'm doing, and I'll give you a camera angle a little bit from the side so that you can see this. As I surge, I need to make sure that my fabric, the bottom fabric stays against the edge of my machine. And I want to make sure that I don't pull on that because that'll pull the ruffles off. And then my top fabric is going to stay right, it's going to butt up right next to the inside of that foot. Okay. And it takes a little doing. You want to you want to make sure that um, you hold that pretty much the whole time. Okay, of course, I didn't set my settings properly because I am talking. So I'm not going to have much of a ruffle right there. So that's a, that's a good example. What you're going to see in just a second is what happens if you don't set your differential feed, okay? Because the differential feed has to be set at two in order for it to ruffle. And you'll see once you do set that differential feed at two, it really feeds a lot more quickly and it's a little bit more difficult to manage. Okay, so you can, so here's here's an example of what it looks like with the differential feed and what it looks like without the differential feed engaged. Let me show you what that looks like, okay? This is the differential feed engaged. This is the differential feed not engaged, okay? So you want to make sure that you have that differential feed at two. And what that's going to do is that's going to push those feed dogs so that it, they feed really fast. And those feed dogs are going to feed your, your um, bottom fabric in more quickly than your top fabric. Okay, 
The next thing that you're going to do after you've stitched that first layer, okay, to make the second layer of your ruffle skirt, you're going to cut off whatever the excess is. And of course, this is a sample. And then you're going to take that bottom layer and you're going to do exactly the same thing. Okay, so let me get my long bottom layer. So remember, we're going to do this right sides together. I don't want this part to ruffle anymore because I've already ruffled it. So I'm going to feed this into the top of my ruffling foot. And the part that I want to actually ruffle, that's going to go underneath my ruffling foot, okay? So that I can actually get um, some ruffling going on. Because remember, what's, what's causing that ruffling is that steel band that we um, popped open. Okay, so let's get the lining so that you can actually see that. Now I think I've got too much light on here. I didn't have enough light for a second here. Get rid of that light. See if that helps a little bit. Yeah, that's going to help it just a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to feed that bottom layer under. So I'm going to lift my presser foot. I'm going to raise that knife and raising that knife to the highest position. That's a really good technique to make sure that um, you feed your layers in evenly. OK, so I'm going to slide that in using my tweezers. OK, I'm going to hold that while I hold this. Like I said, the first part here is the most difficult. Getting all of that kind of in, that's kind of tough. OK, so let's let's get it started. Yeah, I'm going to cut off a whole lot there at the beginning. I don't really want to. It's always a good idea when you're doing this straight ruffle to make sure that you give yourself more than you actually need. And so that's what I've done here on these um, settings. I've given myself more than I actually need. So again, we're going to keep this to the inside of my foot. And we're going to keep this to the edge of my machine. And I'm just going to stitch. And I'm going to try not to pull back on this so that I don't pull the ruffle out. And I want to make sure that it stays even. Got to also make sure I don't catch the top of my skirt in here. Okay, almost to the end there. Now, of course, because this is a doll dress, it takes a lot less time than doing an actual little girl skirt. But um, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, you can see I have a whole lot left over down here. Okay, so that's what we're shooting for. Okay, we're shooting for three layers of ruffles. Okay, now once you have your three layers of ruffles, I've got it caught on the needle. Once you have your three layers of ruffles, you're going to cut off the excess. Okay, and here's my excess over here, so I'm going to cut off this excess. Okay, and then I'm going to fold my skirt together. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch up the side. So let me show you what that looks like um, in an actual skirt, and we'll we'll do that with this skirt. Okay, so this is this skirt has I've already stitched this skirt up. Okay, and so this is what it looks like with all three of the ruffles stitched. Okay, so you can see that. So now all we have to do is stitch up the side. There's one side seam, okay? So we're gonna stitch that up. And now before I stitch that up though, I have to change my settings. I need to move my differential feed back down to in, okay? And then I'm going to change feet. I'm going to take off my um, ruffling foot, okay? And again, you can see that's what causes the ruffle, all right? And I'm going to put my clear foot on. So let me get my clear foot on. Very easy to change the feet on this machine. And then I'm going to change my stitch length. Okay, I'm changing my stitch length to two and a half between two and three. And then my stitch width, I'm going to leave it the same at M. And um, my stitch selector is still at A. It's always at A whenever there is, whenever we have that left needle in. 
Okay. All right. Love, I love is a claim serger. Um, this is a very heavy duty serger. It's got a lot of throat space. It's the same size as, um, it, it's like the Triumph, only it doesn't do cover him. Okay. So this is just the serger shot side of the Triumph. Okay. So I'm going to stitch up these sides and I'm going to use my L marker. Okay. Because what that's going to do is give me a 5 8 inch seam. Um, from my from my left needle. Okay, lower out presser foot. And as I stitch, I want to make sure that my seams are even. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch down right down the side. And you can see I made one of these for my granddaughter the other day, and it just takes such a short time to make this. It's about a 25 minute project all in all and all done on the serger. Okay. So now I've got my skirt. surged up the side. Okay, so now the next thing that I need to do is put my elastic in. Okay, and that too can be done at the serger. All right. And so in order to put elastic in, and I'll show you this one that I've already um, set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch my elastic together. Okay, and then I'm going to divide my elastic into perfect quarters. And then I'm going to divide my skirt where the um, elastic is going to go into perfect quarters. And then I'm going to pin it. And you'll note that I've got right sides together. So the right side of the elastic, okay, is on the right side of the skirt, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure that as I surge, I stretch this elastic, okay? So here we go. I got to take that pin out, but I've got to keep my um, elastic stretch there. And, and you don't want to pull against the machine. You just want to pull against the fabric, okay? So I've got to stretch this, and you can see how far this has to stretch. So I'm going to hold that and stretch. And you can see that I'm holding it in the back and in the front. And now I'm going to pull this pin off. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to allow that stretch. I'm going to hold on to both the back and the front to stretch it so that I don't bend my needles. Okay. And then I'm going to keep pulling and stretching until I get right up to this next quarter mark. Pin out. And I'm trying not to cut the elastic off, but it's not the end of the world if I cut a little of that elastic off. whenever I finish surging. So I'm just going to show you um, this technique. And this is my friend Karen's technique. And I absolutely love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock my um, knives. And then I'm going to stitch over what I've already stitched to solidify those stitches and to lock the stitches. Then I'm going to raise my needles to the highest position. I'm going to raise my presser foot. I'm going to pull, tug a little slack on the needles. And then I'm going to gently remove the stitching from my stitch fingers. I'm going to stitch off and I'm going to clip. And see, you avoid those ugly road tracks. Okay, so you've got a nice neat edge. So now what I'm going to do, and you can do this one of two ways. You can just leave it like this and press it. What I like to do is take this part to my machine um, or my cover hem machine and then just do a top stitch right there. 
Okay, so that's the elastic waistband. We're finished with that. The last thing that we have to do is hem it, okay? And so what you can see right here is I have used our narrow cover, I mean, I'm sorry, it's our three thread narrow hem. And that is our very easy to set up. So this is a three thread overlock narrow hem. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to hem using that. So the settings for that are on your, re your handy reference uh, threading guide. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove one of our needles, okay? So I'm going to very quickly, and this doesn't take but a second, I'm going to clip my needle thread, lower my presser foot, I'm gonna stitch out that thread, okay? And then I'm gonna raise my presser foot, I'm gonna pull that thread out, and I'm going to pull that, the thread off of that thread stand, okay? All right, then I'm going to um, simply remove that needle. And I'm gonna put my needle on this really cool magnetic needle holder up here so that I don't lose it, I love that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my thread got my um, um, thread selector to B because now I just have my right needle in. And all I need to do really is unlock my knife and then I'm just gonna leave my um, setting at two and a half. I'm going to um, leave, I'm sorry, I'm going to put my, leave my width at M. I'm going to move my stitch width length to rolled hem, okay? So you can see that's rolled hem and I'm gonna put it on about two and then I'm going to do one more thing. While it's true that I have my stitch selector on B most of the time when I use my right needle and I don't have my left needle in, when I'm trying to get that hem to roll under a little bit, I'm going to put it down to C. Okay? So now I've set my machine up for this fantastic three thread overlock narrow hem. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide my fabric underneath. I'm going to stitch, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Get really close there so you can see it. See how lovely that is? It's really fast, really easy, and, it, and, it, and it's not a rolled hem, but it does roll your fabric over a little bit. But it's a really fast way to hem your garment. Okay, now coming down to the beginning, and I'm going to do the very same thing I did prior because I want this to be a very neat ending. So I'm going to lock my knife and I'm going to stitch over what I've already stitched. Okay, and once I've stitched over that a few times, I'm going to raise my needle to the highest position. I'm going to raise my presser foot. I'm going to pull a little slack in my needle thread. I'm going to pull it off of the stitch fingers and then I'm going to stitch out. And now I can clip that and there's no ugly beginning or end there on my hem. Okay? All right. So there it is. Very quick, very easy. Um, and then what I did is I added a little sash to the to, to the little red skirt 
and that was super easy. All I did was cut a piece of fabric and then used my narrow hem, my narrow roll, not the rolled hem, but just the narrow hem and made a little sash. Okay. All right. So I'm going to change cameras and see if anybody has any questions. Okay. All right. Any questions? Oh, the settings. Let me walk through the settings for that hem again. I'd be happy to walk through the settings for that hem. The roll, the three thread overlock narrow hem. Okay. So you're going to have your right needle in. Okay. So right needle. Oh, let me get the camera back on the, sorry about that. Let me get the camera back over there on the machine. Okay. All right. I got a mess down here. All right. So you've got your right needle in. Okay, so you've taken your left needle out, right needle in. You have your width, stitch width at M. You have your stitch length at rolled hem two. Okay, rolled hem two. Now, that stitch length is going to be dependent on how thick your fabric is. This is a very thin fabric. Um, so if you have a thicker fabric, you may have to increase your stitch length, okay? Um, you want this to be unlocked. That was only locked for the very end. And then over here, you're going to have your stitch selector on C, okay? And really, that's all there is to it. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty simple setup, and, and I use that um, uh, roll, um, that... Uh, three thread overlock narrow hem um, for, I have three daughters. And so I use, have used it so many times for hemming um, bridal gowns, um, for hemming bridesmaids gowns, the chiffon part of those bridesmaids gowns. You know, a lot of times you'll have three layers of chiffon. And so it's very quick and easy to use that three thread um, overlock narrow hem to, um, to do that. Okay. All right. Um, so are, so are the markings there on the front for your seam allowance? Yes, absolutely. Um, that, that LR marking, and this is actually, oh wait, okay. Again, I keep forgetting that I'm not, my, my camera is not on there. So that LR marking is actually for, um, if you have your, your, your left needle in, the L is for the five eighths and then your right needle in, um, the R is for your five eighths and your, your, um, your instruction manual will give you exactly the width that you need, and, and actually it's M, in order to achieve that perfect 5 eighths inch hem. So let's see if we have any other questions. Y'all are asking great questions. Um, could you just put your blade down so you will not cut the elastic off? Oh, you mean put, I don't recommend doing that because it's really easy to jam your machine um, if you have that blade down, uh, the machine is set up very specifically. Um, and, and so, yeah, so, and actually if you're, let me, let me get the camera back on over here and let me show you this. Um, there is a marking on your machine. If you will make sure that your fabric lines up with that little edge right there, you won't cut off your um, elastic okay but again if you cut off a little elastic it's okay because remember that serger edge secures and um, stabilizes your fabric okay y'all asking great questions okay all right any other questions that i didn't see thank you so much Hey, Melinda. Okay. I, I was looking for questions and I didn't really find anything else besides everybody was just loving your demo. <laughs> they were all like, how does she do it so fast? I mean, I was watching you and it's, it's, in, it's crazy how fast it goes. These sergers, these baby lock sergers are fantastic. It's so easy to make this this skirt, and you know, it, yeah, it doesn't take any time at all. No, I mean, you did it in probably what 15 minutes. Yeah, I mean, 15 minutes. Yeah, got it and done you know, and completed. And if you don't have a camera in front of you, 
you know, and you've cut everything out and you stitch together your um, elastic, it really does take 15 minutes. Now, I'll have, I have a PowerPoint for that that I will also post to our Technic Tuesdays with Karen and Melinda. So if any Perfect. of you wants to see the step-by-step -step process again for every bit of that, including that um, narrow hem, then it will be up there. Perfect. Perfect. And then let me get Karen back on here real quick and we'll just chat a little bit more. Hello. Look, it's all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much fun. No, it is. It was so much fun. Both of you guys. I mean, that video was great as well, Karen. I mean, I feel like I learned so much about those feet and it's, you know, your feet, you got to learn, you got to learn more about them, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> By using so them, you have to use them. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. It was such a great show today and I'm so happy you guys were be able to come on and show off those projects and those feet and help everybody learn something new today. It was really, really fun. Thank you so much for having <laughs> of us. Of course. Of Very course. Important. We'll see you back. And Melinda, I hear you might be coming out to visit us soon. Yes, I get true? to see. Yes, I get to see you live and in person to show off and do our fantastic new the surprises that are coming out from Baby Long this year. Yes, so it will wink, be really wink. Fun. So Keep I look forward. Yeah, I'll be in San Diego. Um, I think or San Marcos the 11th. Is that right? And then San yes, Diego the 12th, 12th and 13th. I believe 12th, 13th. the new. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. we have yeah. our new product party, you guys. So. Make sure you guys check out our website, and we've got some information on that. We've talked about it on our other shows, so it's real, real exciting party coming up soon. <laughs> It'll be really fun. So thank you so much. Yes, Cindy. Thank you for of us. course, of course. Oops. Well, you guys have an amazing rest of your day. I'm gonna go ahead and do some giveaways, okay. and we will talk real soon. Okay. Bye, bye, guys. Thank All you right. For bye. 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 Okay. All right, guys. Now I believe it's time that we do some giveaways. Okay. All right, let's see what our first giveaway is today. Let me get some music going. How did you guys like that? I feel like, I don't think we've had, have we had searches on Takeover Tuesday yet? I don't think so. But it's been, it was so much fun. I mean, she got that skirt done, I felt like in two seconds and it was already completed. So let's go ahead and get our first giveaway. So our first giveaway is our iconic sewing mats. We know them, we love them. It's perfect. They're perfect for anything. I use them as a pin cushion myself. I used to have one on my desk, but I just moved desks. So I'm gonna get a new one. I think I'm gonna go with the cherry blossom one next. But we have got tons of different colors, four different size options, and you can go ahead and pick yours. I will go ahead and get this giveaway going. And you can go ahead and go to smplive.tv to claim your prize and pick out your brand new sewing mat. So let me get this up on the screen. And are we ready? We're ready to draw. We're going. We're going. Let me take this off. All right. The suspense. <gasps> Jeanette Yeager, congrats. You have just won yourself a brand new sewing mat. Go ahead and drop a your information down at smplive.tv and put your information down and you have just won yourself a brand new sewing mat. All righty, our next giveaway, we are going to be doing a $25 gift card. So you guys can take that and go onto our website. If you saw any feet today that you really, really wanted, you know, those piping and ruffling feet, you can go get yourself a brand new foot and get $25 off. All right, let's go ahead and draw. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see. If you guys have a serger, drop down what kind you guys have in the comments below. I want to see which ones you guys have. Sherry. Oh, I really don't want to mess up your name. Sherry G. <laughs> Sherry G. Congratulations. You have just won yourself a brand new $25 gift card that you can go use and shop and get some new goodies and um, browse some of our new notions. We've got tons of new products on the website right now, and it is just all very exciting. So go ahead and check that out. All right, make sure you go to smplive.tv. I've got the website running down below. All right, our last giveaway today, it's a fun one. We were here with Baby Lock Educators, so I thought what better way than to give away a Baby Lock Zest. Ooh, so exciting. So I'm going, this is the machine right here. You can see it on the screen. I'm gonna get rid of it so we can see the names and let's draw. Do, do, do. I feel like, I don't know, this is so, there's so much suspense going on. I just want someone to win. 
Margaret Keener, is that how I say it? Margaret Keener, congratulations. You have just won a baby lock zest. So go ahead and go to smplive.tv and claim your prize and we will get that shipped out to you and you can sew and try new things. And I mean, maybe if we did skirts today, maybe you can try sewing a new skirt on that new machine. Never know, never know what the opportunity holds. <laughs> Alrighty, congratulations to all of our winners. I'm so happy you guys got some new goodies going on and make sure you just head to smplive.tv. And also, we do also have our schedule for all of our shows on smplive.t. So make sure you guys check that out and you can see all of our upcoming shows and dates and everything like that, especially with SMP Live as well. So let me get rid of this. Let me just go ahead and say thank you for coming on today to take over Tuesday. I'm so happy that we all can hang out in the mornings and learn something new and learn from all of these so, so, so ironic, <laughs> so just talented creators and crafters in the community. It has just been so much fun doing these shows with you guys. And it's just, it's such an experience. You learn something new every day. Why not? All right. Thank you guys for coming on and make sure you guys tune in tomorrow for Stitch Nation and Thursday for SMP Live. And we will see you guys soon. All right. Let me do some little shout outs. Bye, Connie Humphreys, Lisa, Millie. We will see you guys soon. Bye, guys. I'll say bye, Roger. Bye. Say bye, Kyle. Come on in. Do a little... <laughs> He's sliding. He's sliding. <laughs> See you later. See you later. <laughs>